Memphis Grizzlies are apparently playing with house money at this point, well ahead of schedule in terms of uh, contention uh, for winning a conference in the regular season. And who knows what happens in the postseason, Channing. For Ja in particular, what has accounted for his rise from, as Kenny put it, good young player to star on the second best team in the Western Conference right now? Well, I think their upper management does not get enough credit for putting the correct players around him to not only build him up, but when he's not there, they're just as good. This is a ridiculously good team. And when you have space with him, I was watching him against the Knicks. He is relentless. The last person I saw that was relentless towards the rim like that was Derrick Rose. This guy is unselfish. He plays with passion. He seems emotionally invested on every single play on both ends. And so for me, when he can rely on Jaron Jackson Jr. to hit five or six threes in a row, he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about what we need to do to win. And you can see that and that maturity and letting slow-mo run the offense when the second unit comes in or running specific plays where he's off the ball and letting Desmond Bain operate the offense from the beginning. So for me, I just look at his maturity and I'm like, that's that's the scariest part because his athleticism is elite, but his maturity and his understanding of what his team needs to win games has reached a point where it's going to be, you know, I got them as not so dark horse to come out of the Western Conference. Interesting. You know, he mentioned, uh, Channing mentioned Derrick Rose, and that's kind of the comp that I come back to, young Derrick Rose, the herky-jerkiness, the sort of violent athletic finishes around the rim, but you came up with a different name that I hadn't thought of. Tan Archibald, <laughs> the late, great Tan Archibald with hops. I mean, you, you think about what this young man did. He's slight of build. Look at that size. He's not the most, you know, he's a great athlete. But when you look at, you know, Archibald, you look at Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was strong. Yeah. He was thicker. Ja is wiry. Ja is wiry, man. Kind of like a shorter version of Reggie. Wiry, strong. But when you watch how he plays with the intensity, he doesn't take a step back. He doesn't back down. And he gives his team confidence every night because he really believes that they can win a championship. And, yeah, everyone keeps talking about they're ahead of schedule. But, Matt, let me ask you this. When are you supposed to win? Let me tell you when you're ready to win. When you have the right pieces and you have the opportunity and it presents itself. Yeah. If I was Memphis right now, I would stop thinking about a schedule. I would start focusing on the here and the now. Why? I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Sure. Somebody can get hurt. Somebody cannot play as well. Other teams can add players to be better. You have an opportunity today to seize the moment. Yep. Right? If you look at the Western Conference, hey, man, Golden State can be got. Now, Phoenix may be a different story, but people are not afraid of Phoenix because they just don't have that physical stature like a Milwaukee team. So if you're, if you're Memphis right now, just prepare yourself to be there in case an injury occurs on that Phoenix team. And you can do like the Atlanta Hawks did last year. The Atlanta Hawks, some kind of way, ended up in the Eastern Conference Finals yeah. and had a chance to go to the Finals. It would not shock me, to Chandler's point, if this Memphis Grizzly team ended up in the Western Conference Finals because... If an injury happens to uh, uh, the Phoenix Suns and the way Golden State have played it late, of late and Utah Jazz have been up and down, this has been one of the most consistent teams other than Phoenix in the entire NBA. Remember, Matt, they got the best, second-best record in the entire NBA.